Hey. What is he looking at? Just cream. Hold on. Tell your friend to call me. Who is this? Lavish hand spa. Who is my friend? Which one? Oh. Oh. All right. <laughs> I didn't even know that was you. I tell her, I tell her. Hello, you guys. Today. I will tell her. I don't know why they got me blocked on my other page. I don't even go live on there. I ain't been live in years. Shit. So any cooking and catering questions y'all have, feel free to ask me now because y'all overflowed my DM with them. So ask me now. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Hold on. What is going on, people? Y'all better come on because I'm not answering no more stuff in my DM. This is my dog, y'all. <laughs> Say hi, Cream. She's sitting at the table with me. What are y'all up to? How can I get unblocked on another page? Y'all look at my dog. This is crazy. <laughs> Why are you on my table like this? I know probably people like, damn, she had that dog everywhere. Great. She ready to go outside. She ready to go outside. I'm going to take her outside in a minute as soon as I get done. I'm going to give y'all five more minutes and I'm hanging up. Just 
My dog is ready to go outside. Oh, you can put pictures up here now? Let me see. Share photos with your videos. Oh. Wow, I never even knew that. Let me see something. You hear that dog crying? You want to go outside? My dog want to go outside. Well, I'll give y'all a preview of what I have going on so you can see, so you can know. Well, most of you know, if you don't know, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia back in November. I actually recently just started about a week ago selling dinners, which I'm probably not going to do that much often. Just probably going to do um, just catering. So I'm just going to be doing catering here in Atlanta, Georgia. Or, I mean, if, even if I want catering in another state, pay to travel or whatever. So you can email me at Talisha's Kitchen at yahoo.com for all catering needs. I have a YouTube channel, Talisha's Kitchen. On Talisha's Kitchen, you can see the different meals that I cook showing you how to cook a whole bunch of different things. A lot of stuff I'm gonna be redoing on there. I'm gonna keep some of the old stuff, but just updated versions of how I cook certain stuff. So I'm trying to do more um, videos of me doing um, more cooking. Come here, my dog, come here. Come here. Look at her, y'all. This is crazy. Oh, she gonna get down. She's going to get down to get in my lap. So on my cooking channel, um, I have a lot of different recipes where I show you how to cook a variety of things. I've been had so many things on there for years. So like I said, I'm going to be doing updated versions of that. But if you're located here in the Atlanta, Georgia area and you're looking for catering needs for birthday party, private parties or whatever the case may be, you can hit me up at Talisha's Kitchen at yahoo.com or even for traveling I will be doing traveling I do have some exciting stuff coming up cooking for some real some real celebrities but I'll let y'all see that when, when that happened I don't like talking on stuff that ain't happened yet because I learned my lesson on talking on stuff that ain't happened yet because that's just how it is but I'm excited to be cooking gonna be cooking for a couple of people they say, hey, Kareem, because she all in my business. I'm excited to be cooking for a couple of people that I'm going to be cooking for. A lot of catering I'm going to be doing. You know, just spread my wings, doing every damn thing that I possibly can. I don't care what it is. I got to cater sales. My shapewear, you know, having multiple streams of income is the best way to go at this, this day and age. So, yeah, different... Things a lot of people come in my DM ask me how to cook different things and a lot of stuff. If you go on my YouTube channel, you can search in my YouTube in, in anybody YouTube um, search bar to see if I have that. That way you can save on the questions because it be on it. Hey, love, I have some questions. I was thinking about you. What's up, silly girl? What's going on? Um, you can search in the search bar. Before you even ask me, do I have this? A lot of people ask me, how do I cook this? How do I cook that? And it'd be stuff that I already have on YouTube. All you got to do is go on YouTube and see that I have that on there already. But I will be having different stuff. So if you see something that I don't have on there and you want me to show you how to cook it, if I know how to cook it, I will. 
and um i'll be going live on here a little bit more often just to answer a lot of catering need a lot of people even be coming in and asking me about prices with catering or even with like selling dinners i think people get misconstrued with prices with selling dinner with stuff might be too high or stuff might be too low you have to take stuff in consideration i mean it's different if um when you paying for everything and that's not to knock people that's that's stealing stuff because hey however you get it you get it i don't care that's you know what i'm saying hell more more power to you but when you paying for stuff all that stuff count trays count the containers that stuff go in the silverware that you have seasonings cost not just the meat the sad dishes preparing the food using your light and gas and your time all that stuff goes into making a dinner and i think people get that misconstrued with um prices like how i how i price mass i don't price mass on just how much a pack of chicken costs in in the store to make some bake a baked chicken dinner every a, a lot of things come, come into play with that because i have dip, different um contain let me show y'all some containers hold on let me show y'all something mm -hmm. show you some a case of this in um restaurant depot or stuff like that is probably like um 50 or 60 dollars so a case of this is 50 or 60 dollars these ones these clear ones and these are the ones that i've been using down here in atlanta because a lot of time i pull up on people like going to let me tell you the good thing about selling dinners in atlanta that i do like that's different from cleveland Cleveland kind of small, but everybody know me in Cleveland for cooking. So I can just post in Cleveland, hey, I I'm selling this. And everybody used to know where I stay at. They'll pull up at my house and they'll come to my house or whatever. But the different things from Atlanta, ain't nobody coming to my motherfucking house here. I don't want nobody to know where I'm staying at. And um, you just can't have that here. It ain't the same. Here, so a lot of places, I, we pu I pull up on people. You go to... They have a lot of studios here where, where um, people, you know, rappers and stuff, gambling houses, niggas on the street, you know what I'm saying? All them three places, I can just pull there, and by the time I go to the second or th second one, I'm sold out. So I can't, when I'm packing food, these is not good for that. Now, I used to use these at home because, you know, people come pick it up, it ain't nothing, but I'm out. I'm out going to different places. So, you know, these are clear and these these snap. So these are little these are more expensive. They even got some other ones that's way more expensive, but they like a hundred dollars a box. I ain't about to buy that because these do just as good. Cause they snap clothes and nothing will come out. So when putting prices on food, you have to take all that into consideration. And if let me just say this. If you is Okay, let me tell you something. If you are selling dinners and just say you are stealing everything or even if you're using food stamps, let me tell you something. You still need to calculate how much it costs to make that meal because there's going to be a time and place where you might can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So now you have to, um, you know, pay for the stuff. But then people... They're going to be wanting them same prices because if you go up, people going to go crazy. This is another container that I have for um, putting like banana pudding and um, different sweets and stuff in. I ain't did no fruits yet. But that's another thing. Every hood I go to here in Atlanta or you pull up on studios, they want fruit. I don't know what it is with fruit here in Atlanta. They love that fruit shit. So if y'all come down here and want to sell some fruit, I'm telling you, y'all have to make a lot of money. Because they like fruit. And another thing they like is soul food. Because they don't have a lot of soul food restaurants down here in Atlanta. And let me tell you something. The fucking Chinese cook chicken better than the black folks here. I swear for God. Like, I I can't understand that to save my life. Like, how do the Chinese people wings chase, b taste better 
than than the than the than the black people here. Like I'm telling you, like you know how like we got Kim wings and all that. It just they don't really have wing spots like that. If you want a good wing spots, you go into the Chinese people here. So that's a good thing about when coming to um selling dinners here. And another thing they do that Cleveland don't do. And, and if you in Cleveland, I'm just giving you this suggestion. So I, this is why I want you to share this live, send this to people. I'm going to say this on my page because maybe this can help someone else. Because a lot of things that that's different from here in Atlanta and Cleveland, let me tell you what they do. These clubs here, first of all, everybody know they stop selling food um, in the clubs at certain hours. But these people here... They be outside the club with their barbecue grill or they set up their little table or they pop their trunk in the parking lot and be selling dinners, be selling out. Because, you know, when we come out the club, we be hungry. We be want something to eat. Baby, you come out by the um, Magic City Blue Fame, one of them, you got to do right across the street, barbecuing, fresh ribs, everything right there, making all. Let me tell you and another thing. I'm going to tell you what, what they do down here. When you come about that club and you about to buy a dinner here in Atlanta, you ain't get no ten, fifteen dollar dinners, baby. They want forty dollars for a for a plate. And the plates, have you ever seen the half container plate? Like, just say half of this. This would be some chicken over rice just in this little part right here. I swear to God, selling it for thirty or forty dollars, and people out there lined up buying this some of the shit nasty as hell but i guess everybody everybody got a taste bud for different people so you can't knock some just because i i might not like it the man still got a whole line going down the motherfucking street when you come out the club so that's a good thing that i that i like about atlanta and then another thing late nights with um like i said like they 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 studios like niggas gonna be in the studios like and they be you know putting their album, rapping, getting high and everything, and they be wanting food. So pulling up on them, you good to go. You got everybody's studio here, Future Studio, QC. These studios you can just go to, you know what I'm saying, and just pull down on these people. Hold on. I'm on live. Let me call you right back. You could just pull down on these people. Like a lot of these, a lot of the rappers here that everybody see on TV, they really can. They all really friendly. You know what I'm saying? They, I have had good experiences with them. So you know what I'm saying? So they, they, and they like to eat because you know niggas be high. You know motherfuckers be high and shit. And at three something in the morning. Ain't nobody, ain't no restaurants open and people want to, they'll call you like, hey, come fix this, come do that. So that's another good thing that I like here about Atlanta that I see the difference. Because you don't have too many studios in Cleveland. Shout out to my people, his studio. Wait a minute, let me, I got to pull up his um name. He got a studio in Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? But in, in Atlanta, it's a studio on every corner because all the hottest rappers, they all live here. So it's a studio on every quarter, corner, even it's the, 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 the rappers that's up and coming. It, it's studios here and, and they like to eat. So coming down here food-wise is is a good, you, you, you just can't go wrong because it's a lot of things that they don't do. Like they don't have, they not used to Polish boys down here. They don't know nothing about no Polish boys. They don't know nothing about no Polish girls. They don't really have corned beef down here like we got corned beef. You know what I'm saying? So they don't even have a Mr. Heroes. You can come down here and put a franchise Mr. Heroes here. They don't have Mr. Heroes here. So it's a lot of stuff, food stuff. They don't have, they have a lot of, me let me tell you what kind of restaurants they got here. A lot of upscale restaurants. Like when you go in, you know, y'all got your little lamb chops, your little salmon dinners, your little slider bites and stuff like that. They don't really have like um soul food restaurants. They got a lot of Mexican restaurants. They got a lot of um Arab restaurants. Like my one friends, they take me to this one place and I hate it because I only eat one thing from this place. You know what I'm saying? And um, hold on. I'm on live, Richard. Let me call you right back. I only um 
I only eat this salmon and rice because they got this like sauce on this rice. And the man, the owner is so fucking cool because he cracks up at me all the time. Because I'd be like, he'd be telling me to try shit. I'm like, I don't like that hummus and all that other weird stuff. They got a lot of weird restaurants down here. So me coming like with soul food and different stuff like that, it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's different to, to them. They don't be having no, no, they do got like, you could probably count on your hand how many soul food restaurants that, that they got down here. What's up with the Mexican cornbread? <laughs> I ain't made, you know, I haven't made no Mexican cornbread since I've been here. But you know what? I might make some. I, I'm supposed to be selling dinners again this Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. But I'm supposed to be going to a few studios. Thanks for bringing that up, Lily, because I might put some um, Mexican cornbread in here and sell it for $5. Thanks for even bringing that up. I didn't even think about that. Um, and Lily, my Mexican cornbread, how I make it is on my YouTube channel. It's on my YouTube channel. It's really easy um, how I make it. But that those are the, those are the good things that I like. But I got to get back to prices. I don't think I done skipped over the prices. Back to pricing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's on my YouTube channel. You can go on there and, and make it. Make it yourself. But um, back to prices when when pricing um food or whatever, you you can't price food. Even when I was selling dinners and and I probably was stealing the shit again, food stamps or whatever, long time ago. Um, I still in the beginning I went off those prices because I wasn't um, because I wasn't really paying for the stuff. But now. Then as the years went by, I was actually paying for the stuff. I was actually paying for the containers. I was actually paying for the meat. Let me tell you something. My seasonings alone cost like a hundred and some dollars. Like, and these are seasonings that I have to have, that I have to cook. Seasonings cost a lot of money to season something. So, so think if I'm making a big pan of this, a big pan of that, all that stuff go, go into the prices. So you can't say this person is too high or this per person is too cheap, but y'all go to other, y'all go to these fancy restaurants. They shit nasty and they get you a little bit and it's high as hell. I was, um, the Marble Room, they, they steak was $150. For a tomahawk. Now, a tomahawk, you could probably get a nice little thick one for about $30, $20, $25, or whatever. They selling that same steak for $150. A la carte, that's not even including you getting your other size. Now, here it is. You have somebody else that's selling a T-bone steak with this, this, that, and you don't want to pay $25 for it. Y'all had to think of stuff like that. I think us as black people, you got to think outside the box and stop just thinking about... Um, Stop thinking about prices with stuff because everything, uh, my prices, my and my prices up here is a little bit more higher because, like I said, I have to buy these type of containers. It's different things I have to do. I have to get get warmers to keep the food warm. So all that has to go in my prices. Cause I have to make my money back because I'm not selling dinners to make two dollars off off each dinner. No, I'm trying to really make a profit off of there. So my average dinners up here is is is, is starting off at twenty dollars. Nothing less. Twenty dollars. My strawberry banana pudding. That shit's still five dollars. That, that that's the other stuff still five dollars. So that because that those prices are the things that's not changing, but other stuff like that it is. And since I've been selling dinners here, I have have got the same thing. When I pull up on a lot of niggas, they be like, "You give out a lot of food. Like we be paying for this." And it's and they be paying way more than what I be charging for less food because I told you that's how they sell food in Atlanta. Imagine selling half of this for forty dollars. I want some of your food in Marietta. You in Marietta? Do you just cater or do you actually sell? I do both. I cater and I do I sell dinners whenever I think I want to. I might go out this weekend, but that shit gets tiresome, like, with, with selling dinners. So, back to the prices. So, when putting your prices with selling dinners, even if you shortcut it somewhere, you need to really think, if I'm actually really paying for this stuff, how much it actually costs and to make this meal then go from there. Because it's going to come a time where you can't do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have to, at some point, you're going to want to do the right way. Man, we miss you here. I'm going to be in Atlanta next month, though. All right. Just hit me up or whatever. So that's good. With the, that's another thing with the prices. 
And um, it, it, even if people want to come out here and sell dinners, those are the main things to do. Go to the clubs at night. They got gambling houses here. And they gambling houses, like, they really be gambling in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to go in there and be at the table. Like, what you getting? What you getting? Go in there, get their food. They hurry up, get you their money. They focus on their thing, but they still hungry. They have microwaves in there. They gambling houses funny down here. So, you know, I, I make a pr pretty good pretty 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 good money on um selling dinners out here in Atlanta. I don't, I don't really have no problem. It's really going to get better once I start doing this catering for certain people. So, that's what I want to cover the um the prices of doing stuff, the um how it's so much different down here in Atlanta with 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 selling like I can sell dinners one day here in Atlanta and and probably make my car note just one day off, off of selling foods in here. And that's just off selling two different type of meats because how much I'm selling them for, how much it is and where I'm going. And then they, I mean, that's just how it is here. So that's what i wanted to come to bring to y'all so do y'all have any more questions about cream what is you doing is that somebody out there my dog if she hear anything look at her fat mama who out there baby when she hear anything honey them squirrels be outside she hear that shit. she she go fucking crazy. Okay. So that's all I wanted to bring to you. I just wanted to, I wanted to cover going over prices with, with cooking your food. And even if you have some um, questions, if you're thinking about selling dinners or you are selling dinners and you just might have some um, questions on what do you think I should do? How you think I should do it? I'm more, I'm more open to um, come talk to you. I try to go live often to answer a lot of these questions. A lot of people be in my DM asking me stuff like this and then a lot of people be in my dm oh let me just cover something a lot of people in my dm that ask me for because i don't know if i actually really cover this or really explain to people what happened why i closed down my restaurant let me tell you something in life you think you want to do stuff then when you do you come up find out that this ain't even what you want to do and that's where I was at with my restaurant. Uh, have, let me tell you something. Running a... Oh, my fucking pizza. Wait a minute. <laughs> Talking to y'all done burn my pizza. Wait the hell a minute. about that but let me just say let, let me let me just tell y'all something selling dinners and running a restaurant is a 100 percent totally different things so people think because you selling some dinners and even if you do it excellent and good you think you want to go to the next step as into having a um, restaurant, which is nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that, but hold on. I'm not saying that that's a um that's a bad thing. That's something that you shouldn't be thinking, but that's something that you really need to sit down and plan and really think. Because you got to understand this. When you're selling dinners, you have no overhead. The only overhead you have is supplying the food. Supplying the food and, um, you know, having customers. That's the only overhead that you have in the restaurant. I mean, at home. Now, transitioning from a home selling dinner catering to a restaurant, baby, you have overhead. You have to pay people 
to um to to help you and um the the bills that come with running that and one thing about a restaurant especially if you have a soul food restaurant people want your macaroni they want they want talisha's kitchen macaroni so if i have somebody come in there and help me if they ain't making it just like mine they will complain so you had to take all those type of stuff in to consideration then you have more to cook more to do and this is that let me tell you a few pros and cons i just give you all a little snippet i did write a book about all this actually i have somebody that's looking over it that's supposed to be editing it i wrote this book like three years ago like it's just time for me to just drop the damn thing and get out there so y'all can see exactly what happened with me with my restaurant in the in the in the in the Oh, I, I told you about everything I did wrong. That way it can help you so you won't do nothing I did. Like, I mean, don't do shit I did when I opened up my restaurant. So it had became time consuming. First of all, I was I was away. I was never at home for my kids. I, I tore like a ligament in my in my knee. I had to start getting steroid shots because I was um I was always you know standing up and preparing and cooking and I I I first of all and then the bills the money so it was like I was not paying Peter my money was recycling recycling going back and I I didn't get to see no profit or anything like that because I didn't plan financially for it. So everything was paid out. Everything had to go. And this is that. And then by me being there 24 hours, I if you want to run a business successfully, you're going to need other cooks. Cooks, hiring another cook, and especially a cook that you want that can cook, is expensive. Shit, people be wanting 15 16 $20 an hour. You know what I'm saying? So do you have that? To open up that or are you do you think you're gonna be in that kitchen slaving all like that so when i first opened up my restaurant i'm just gonna give y'all a few things everything else i'll leave in the book for you go read and purchase when i do drop it the the um you have to get certified from um from um the city the city the state have to come out and and, and certify you to be a restaurant so in, in in a certified in in that process, they ask for you ask for your menu. So I had this menu. Thank you. I had this menu. <laughs> I gave the menu to the lady. Now, let me tell you something about life. You gotta understand. This lady is the one that come out and find your ass if something wrong. Make sure that 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 you up the code and to violate state state health board people. These are people, so they know what's supposed to go on in the restaurant. I didn't know what's supposed to go whatever, but I'm going in this thinking I know every motherfucking thing. When I showed the lady my menu, she like Talisha, you. She was like, let me tell you something. I ain't trying to tell you how to run your business, but I have been in this for 30 some years. You have too much on your menu. So you mean to tell me you gonna have all this all the time? Because when somebody come in your restaurant and they want that, you gonna have that? So you gonna be producing all this and this? I'm like, yeah, this is the... About, a, about two months in, I had shortened the, the, the menu, which I should have took the lady advice, but me being bullhead, thinking I knew everything, I didn't. I didn't listen to her. You know what I'm saying? So if you ever noticed in a lot of restaurants, they don't have, it's it, unless it's like one of them big chain restaurants, but most restaurants have small menus. They have small menus because it, it don't, stress your customer out of thinking what the hell i want to get on this menu so small menus is good for customers because customers be like okay this is that and small menus is good for you because you don't have to produce a a, a, a lot of this and you can be able to maintain this and you can always run specials to have all that extra other stuff you want but your main stuff 
when you have to open up a restaurant, your menu shouldn't be all the way long down the street. That was one of the, one of the things that that I had one of the things that I had went wrong with. So I I do I do talk about that in my book. It's actually funny, and every when I see the lady in Cleveland, we laugh about it all the time. She always asks me what I'm doing. So it had just became too bearable. I couldn't do it. Distressed me not being at home. My motherfucking knee, my back hurting, and me cooking all like that. It it, it seven days, six days, weeks, five days. It was just too much for me. So that's what went happened with me and my restaurant and I just decided to close it down. Then I had stopped cooking for a long, long did I start back cooking? I did start back cooking. I kinda did like some um the Uber Eats. I had did Uber Eats out of my house and then I'm like, I don't even want to do this shit. But then I had started doing catering. Like I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna stick to catering. So that's what I do now. Like when I sell dinners, I just be down here. This is my first time selling dinner since I've been down here since November. I just did that last week now catering i do begin some caterings for for people i do that but as far as like out like selling dinners no i'm 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 more in a stage in my life when it comes to to cooking to sell money catering i want my money up top i know what i want i know what i gotta do and i know what i gotta produce for this person versus me like my hustling side to I don't know if this might make sense. I'm, let me see if I can say it right. My hustling side was selling dinners. I'm over that. That's like going to cooking the dinners, putting them in the tray, getting it all together, put it in your car, hit the block, that type of shit. I'm over that. I'm more so over, hey, Talisha, I want you to come cook. I got this, this, that. I got a couple bands for you. Buy some. That's what I'm more focused on when it comes to catering whenever I do want to cater so that's where i'm at and like i say most stuff will be coming out when i finish this book that i, I wrote right after i closed down my restaurant so that's how long that it's been so i just wanted to join this live to to come to y'all to let y'all know what i what i've been doing in atlanta forest talisha's kitchen and what Talisha Kitchen is going to have going on. And how Talisha Kitchen is still going to be helping you. How I'll be going more live with you all. To help y'all with different um, with different questions y'all have. As far as catering, cooking needs, and whatever. So make sure y'all share this live. Comment in the comments. And let me know how it go. And I'll come back in a few days. Two days ago. Y'all have a good day.